Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about clean code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you avoid having to change in lots of files for just one implement uh, for implementing just one small feature? The project at my work is in such a state that even small feature additions like adding a simple button that does some minor backend operation requires changes in around 30 different files. How do you keep a clean architecture from the start and is there a way to fix the current state? Well, I have a one of my favorite uh, Cons uh, princi principles around this exact topic is called the Gall's Law, which basically states that any complicated system is built of, uh, out of a simpler system over time. So everything starts as a simple system and then it grows into something complicated. And the the thing that really is important about that perspective, I think, is that you can't do the reverse. You cannot take a complicated system that has grown over time and then just simplify it by uh, by tweaking it or trying to shift around code. Because the, the state of the code is there is there for a reason. Because you've made all of these decisions one uh, like it's like basically taking steps forward like you take one step and then another one and then another one and each part of the step is just you coming in with a new set of requirements that you m in some most uh, in quite a lot of situations you don't actually know about those new requirements when you build the first thing so what i argue to you is that it, it is only possible to prolong the clean, clean, uh, the clean, the uh, cleanness or the cleanliness of a system. If you design something really, really well, it's going to live and be working for quite some time. But all software has a lifetime. All of uh, there is a time. It's uh, I, I think that the best way to describe it is with products. I mean, if you build, let's say that you build a really nice car. If you, you know that you have built a really nice and good car if it stands the test of time. But there is a finite amount of time before everything moves, because the world keeps on moving around your your nice vehicle. So if you look at the old cars of today, like that when they were ca ca coming out, maybe like 30, 40 years ago, uh, or in some cases might even be longer than that, at the time they were well-made machines. But things continue, like uh, everything moves forward, and so by today's standards, they're actually pretty crap. Like they're not even on par with the modern ways of doing things. And this is inevitable in software as well. You will start out with a very simple system, and as you progress, you know that you have done. You make the right moves if you can continue adding features to your system and still have some semblance of productivity but when you get to a certain point this will no longer be sustainable you will find that you can't actually either because the hardware is changing or your infrastructure is changing or the, the bugs in the system are growing or like the product personal productivity or the cleanliness of the code has been so uh, um, well it's it's been going on for so long that it's not really feasible anymore I mean if you are gonna f change 30 different files for a button you're starting to see the sort of issues that I'm talking about. And, and I think that this is inevitable. It is completely inevitable. It is because uh, every feature starts the same way. It starts out as this small little thing. And you build the thing that is right for here and now, today, and then a little while later, it can be tomorrow, it can be a week, it can be a year, it can be two, two, three years. Someone comes in and says, hey, you know what? We have this new requirement that we need to add to the thing we already have. And then you try and if that goes well you do it again and you repeat that process and it's sort of like a tree it start out it starts out as this very simple construct with just a trunk and then it starts branching out and it starts growing and becomes more and more complex over time and before you know it you're in this sort of situation and this in at least from what i can see and i really do believe the Gauss law is like it is true uh, if when you arrive at this point there's no way for you to just refactor this into something nicer. What you should do, at least this is the thing that I do, and I think that this is probably the way that it, sh mo it is most sustainable. It is to take a look at the requirements of today. Take a look at 
take a long hard look at the feature that you have and try to understand that like, don't judge the feature for what it is today like don't like because you know if you really think about it you know the reason why you where you why you are where you are today all these tiny little decisions have built up to the legacy system that you have today and now you have to figure out what are those requirements because this is the thing your implementation of the solution will be very different now because now you have more information than you've had any time at the other at the other stages because when you first designed the thing you didn't know all the things you know today and that's why it was impossible for you to write the right thing at that point but now, but now you have Ha, you, you can look at all of these features because and that is a, if you think about it it's a completely different world for you now it's a new it's a new world for uh, for the system and so now you're actually able to design a new solution that fits all of these requirements in a clean way that was impossible before because you didn't know that you would have all these requirements and so now do exactly that thing take a look at the state of the world today, the state of the system, and go, all right, given the requirements we have today, and this is the thing you did when you first made that little thing. It's just now that, that now it's more a bigger feature, so it's going to take longer, but it's still the same process. And really think, okay, if I wanted to make this into a clean, well-working solution within this system, what would I have to do? And then design that thing. And now the real challenge comes, which is to figure out, okay, how can I create a migration strategy for this? Because the, some people will tell you that you have to rewrite the system, and that's not, not no, you don't have to. You might have to rewrite a part of the system for sure, but you can't write, rewrite a really large system. Like it's never going to work, because there it's simply too. Uh, the the systems are usually like uh, the big rewrite. It just never works. It never works. You can't because you're when you try to do the big rewrite usually what you do is that you try to optimize the system for a set for one perspective and you neglect this thing as I've been saying uh, that all of the pieces have been growing in an organic fashion and all of these requirements are a reflection of what the system needs to do in order for the company to make money and the business to be sustainable so you can't just rewrite the entire system from one of those perspectives which is usually the case when a developer says we should rewrite the system because they are only looking at oh this part of the system is really ugly and then they forget that well the reason why this is ugly in many cases is because all these other things needs to happen and they forget about that because the system is too big for any one human to keep in their head so by just looking at a piece like uh, something like uh, and saying that okay this solution here well we need to look at this from today's perspective and then rewriting that part of the system uh, I, you are much more likely to actually get a working a really nice working solution in place you can think of it in a very similar way to if you have a car let's take the car analogy again in some cases you, uh, you mean if the car isn't working all that properly I mean it might just be that you need to switch you might just need to change the wheels or maybe you need to change the engine you will, but you can still keep the body you need to figure out because I mean you can't uh, you sure you can build a, a completely new car from scratch but it's not going to be the same one and the same thing applies here try to look with today's eyes on your system and say all right this is what we have today and if we were to rewrite the system today, or w this part of the system, this thing isn't, that isn't really working, how would we do it? And how would we fit it in to the current solution? So what I want you to take away from this is that there is, in my opinion, no way for you to keep a clean architecture from the start and just keep it clean forever. Because it's inevitable that due to the unpredictable nature of how we do innovation and software development, that your features are going to start requiring compromises and quick solutions and so forth and the thing that dictates how well your architecture is working is how long can you sustain productivity and uh, quality of service that's it like how long are you gonna stay it's the, it's the, I mean, if you think about it it's the same thing with physical products the products that are really really well made they their lifespan is enormous it's they're still doing the same thing but they're just so they're, they're well made and the requirements haven't really changed so they keep on delivering even years after they were invented but at some point 
the world changes and they can no longer they're no longer a good solution and then you should think about it as just replacing an engine part or like a uh, or a mechanical part of the system you have realized that well um, all these things have kind of start turning into a mess what would we do today if we could change this if we went, went and took a look at this feature that you want to fix how would we design it today and remember don't judge the feature for what it looks like today because the same thing will happen even if you rewrite your thing today if your company continues in 30 years someone else is going to look at the thing that you made today with that rewrite that you did and go what a bunch of idiots why did like well how did this get so ugly and then you have to do the thing again that's it's the same thing with physical products and it's the same thing with software you can't have this idea that software will just live forever if you write it once and then you can just tweak it forever because at some point tweaking will not be enough you actually have to replace something have a great day